Catherine, that it's, it's time if you're ready. All right. Do you open and roll call? Do I have an approval of the agenda? I'll make a motion for the agenda. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Good. Okay. Um, minutes and approval. Approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. All right, thank you. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, Renee. liability and you have an additional endorsement of Merrill and Deborah Ludwig and Rachel Hudson and Jeff Hudson because the um, the soccer field well the soccer field yeah. where the concession stand is one and then also we have the gazebo mm -hmm. on the Ludwig property and so if there would be a claim either place where you know there'd be a liability claim cities the city's coverage is primary, and theirs would be secondary. So our coverage would respond first, and that's a really nice protection for them. So we would respond first, and so they've got up to the two million limit for them on that. So, and on the automobile, we carry two million limit of liability. We carry a two hundred dollar deductible comp and a three fifty deductible on collision. And we also carry two million hired and not owned coverage. And what that is is, if you are on city business but driving your personal auto, and we're involved in a bad accident, you know, and you'd say, "Gee, I'm in a hurry. I've got to get down to the seat meeting or some mm -hmm. other meeting," um, they might bring the city in. So we have the city as secondary coverage on when, on your personal autos if you're involved in an accident. Okay. Um, we have two. Oh, we have the dump truck and the uh, Ford F-150. They have full coverage. And the antique fire truck and the dump truck just have liability. That's been that way for years. Mm -hmm. And on your public officials' liability, we have two million. So that would be to protect yourselves if someone thought that you had made an error in judgment or something and caused damage to someone in town. Uh, you know, in, in some manner, not necessarily in town, but in any manner, it'd be two million dollars. Uh, protected and of course it include all defense costs as well. We have an excess policy on police professional liability. That premium has not changed in a lot of years. It's $144 a year. But that's incidental law enforcement coverage in case something would occur that the sheriff's, you know, we would be secondary then. The sheriff's mm -hmm. department would be primary and we'd be secondary. We just want to protect ourselves in case of that incident. Then the proper, on the property, the buildings and the contents are blanketed. That means we have an amount on each one, but if something happens to this building and it exceeds the amount to rebuild it, they'd actually pay that amount because we, we have them blanketed. So um, turn the page and here you go. Here's all the coverage on the buildings. And what that means across the top is the building, so it's all replacement cost. And then the building coverage is there. And the next one means contents. Business personal property means contents. So that's the contents. And then miscellaneous property and unscheduled miscellaneous property. Those are things that we might uh, tractor, something that we use around town that have to be listed. And then here we have EDP is computer coverage, hardware and software coverage we have here. And we've got a limit of 22000 on the hardware and 10000 on the software. But as you go through these, the cool part is we added on pools and transformers, which we have been talking about for some time. Very inexpensive to add it on, but what we had to do was get a grid of all these. And so I came over and Nancy and I went through the whole town and put dots where the poles were. And we had to go back and come up with addresses because they're all in the middle of the blocks. So we did. I mean, they're there. They're the most interesting addresses probably in town, but they'll be paid. Got it covered, so, and that's all it took. And then they just added it on, and it was very inexpensive to add those on. So I'm really tickled about that. 
Because you could lose in an ice storm. You could, you know, they could, you could have several poles, poles snap. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. So, and then, of course, we have the stone pillars, different things, the signs. Things that could happen to them include that I think of, because what's going to happen to a stone, really? But I think vandalism, they could spray paint it, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Those things could occur. And then the nice signposts in town would look awesome. You never know. So somebody could run into them. Mm -hmm. So, and so, um, any questions? Am I going over it too quickly? No. Or you got it? Okay. No. And so the last page shows the premiums. Um, the general liability premium is based on the rates have not changed. It's based on expenditures <coughs> and, and basically basically expenditures, which we're way down for this next year. But so was our, we don't have any big projects either to subtract out of. So that's odd. It's receipts and in, income and income tax. And so this is the way it goes, guys. I wanted it to be down. <laughs> I just <laughs> argued like man to get this down. <laughs> I was just put up quite a fight for them, actually. And then they finally sent me the budget back and said, is this right? And I said, well, sure, yeah, it is. So that's the way that goes. Um, the auto liability and physical damage then. So you're up about 400 in the general liability. The auto is up about um, 100. The public officials, that is same. Law enforcement is same. And property were up because we did add a bunch of things last year. Not only the, the poles, but we made sure we added any other structures that were new last year, including the, the, the lamps, street lamps. Then you have a member credit, it's a vested credit. Each year they decide on a certain percent that you're going to get back because you're vested with ICAP. So, and this year with a lower percent than last year, next year might be a bigger percent. I'm not quite sure. So, so there we have it. Um, the $350 deductible on collision, you can bump it up to $600 and then save $20. So it didn't give you a bunch of savings there. I was looking for some savings, but uh, it didn't come to the money, so. Okay. Um, one thing I was going to tell you is the deductible we have on the property. We have a $1,000 deductible, and that's the most common deductible. So, um, and that is a good rate break at that deductible. So going higher doesn't give you much of a rate break. So, okay. so you've done well on that. Questions at all? Anyone? Hello. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. Again, I always brag about you guys because I found that when you know when that building got demolished here by the little tornado that came down on that building, that building got torn. You know, well then um, they pay you the actual cash value of the building right away, and then you have to decide to rebuild somewhere. And uh, so they paid, I don't remember whether they paid 80000 right away or what, but ever. But you were able to get up to 132000 And they said only one other city has ever, ever gotten the rest because they could never decide amongst themselves to build a new building. And they all fought and nobody ever built a building. So I thought, yes, so we got the full amount. And we only had it insured for like, I don't know, 80 or something like that. So... But we got the full amount because we're blanketed. So, yes, so we're ready. Good job. We don't want any storms, but we're ready. Yeah, okay. So, okay. And anything else you want to ask me? Okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Thank, thank you, Renee. Do I have a motion to approve the renewal? I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of Mid Iowa Insurance. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Next agenda item is Myron Derringer, JEO. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me up to uh, go over the proposal. I don't know if you have that in your back. There we go. Okay, I guess uh, we could go over that if you want to. I I'm open to anything you want to do, but uh, we can go over that and I can just highlight a few things. And, uh, if you got any questions, speak out. <clears throat> Uh, this is basically a study for a proposed subdivision. And what this basically is, it's, we got it broken down into a few parts. The first one is pre preliminary field survey. <clears throat> what we would do there was 
would be uh, come up and look at the site, pop manhole lids, uh, measure down to uh, inlet depths, uh, very uh, basic stuff to see what will work and what won't work. See if the sewer is deep enough to serve this way or this, you know, maybe two different ways. Uh, look for visible utilities that are on the site and we would uh, probably get some of the data collection before we come up to do that to uh, so we know where we're looking. Uh, and then basically we'd bring the survey crew up and shoot spots around to see which way drainage goes, which way it comes in, so forth. Just very minor stuff like that to develop some kind of sense of what's going to work and what isn't. Uh, then uh, the second part is data collection. We would try to get with the city and get as much detail as we can about what's going on out there. Uh, utilities, subdivision and zoning regs, any easements. Uh, we, we would actually call one call and uh, they, they're pretty so sophisticated anymore. They, they could come up with some maps and some utility contacts. Well, we would contact the DOT and see if there's a possibility of getting access off of Highway 71 just to explore that possibility. Uh, and if there's any site requirements, setback requir requirements for the DOT, we would uh, get that information too. And then the, the next one is a is an environmental assessment. First of all, I'm not an environmentalist type guy, but we do have an expert on staff that, and that's where I got my numbers for the fee and stuff, but he was surprised that you did not get uh, environmental clearance when you bought the property. That's what he said. Uh, what that is, and uh, usually, if it falls in the railroad, old railroad corridors or somewhere in that neighborhood, it automatically kicks into uh, this environmental assessment. And what that, what this is, is basically uh, it, in phase a phase one environmental site assessment. Is basically, they explore the history of that site. And they would uh, look back in the records, and probably interview people that have been around for a while, and try to establish if there's some kind of um, evidence that there might be some contamination there or a possibility of contamination. Was there a gas station there? Uh, usually, a railroad corridor, they have, of course, you know what goes on in the railroad corridors. They got lubricants, oils, chemicals all the time, so that's pretty much why it's automatic if it's in a uh, railroad corridor. But what that does is, is if there's evidence that, yeah, there could be some possibilities of contamination, then they, usually the EPA would want you to roll that into a, in a phase two, which gets to be a little bit more complicated. It, they, they do borings, they analyze soils and stuff like that. The reason we brought this up is a couple things. We want you to be aware of that. There, there could be a possibility. If you go in and subdivide that land and sell off the houses and not do anything, and they start digging, and they run into some junk or whatever. What happens then? Do they go back on the city and say, you sold me this property that's bad, you know, it just gets messy, I guess, after that. And I guess I'll, you can see where I'm going with this. It's kind of a protection for you. And, uh, you wouldn't have to do it at this point, which I would recommend you do it sometime if you ever did develop it. Now maybe it's 
maybe it's a little preliminary to say yes, go do it now. Uh, you may want to explore all the possibilities first, to see if physically it will work for a subdivision or if it won't. If it won't work, you don't have to do anything, I guess. You wouldn't have to spend that money, you know, $3,000, that's, that's a good chunk of change for somebody telling you that it could be polluted. <laughs> you know if you know what I mean. But uh, we, we, we thought maybe we should uh, bring that to your attention right off the bat. Um, and then the other thing is, if you subdivide it, sell the lots, the people that buy the lots, their financial people might ask for an environmental environmental clearance on it to get funding and so forth. That's a possibility. And more and more it's becoming more uh, often than not they will ask for that. Especially if they know that's on a railroad corridor. So that's the re when you get to the next page and that $3,000 sticks out there there's a lot of work to go that goes into these assessments. That's really in a nutshell. I don't know much about it, but this is what they tell me. Uh, so if you want more detail, we can sure to get more for you. But, and uh, we can bring in we can bring in our expert to it. He can he can razzle dazzle you with a bunch of figures, I guess. Uh, but at this point, we'll just continue on, I guess. And then after we do all that information. We would prepare a, um, a couple, two site layouts based on what you want for uh, boundaries. And that might mean for what you may have there now, or if you think there might be a possibility of uh, buying more or getting more land uh, next to it, we, you know, we would uh, listen to that and take that into consideration. Um, Basically, we give you two layouts of what it might appear to look like and what would s the utilities would serve the lots and so forth, or what wouldn't serve. Uh, and, uh, and then we would bring that to the council and, and uh, let you guys hammer, hammer us on that and see what you, you might come up with some other totally different idea based on those two concepts. And then based off that meeting and what and the feedback we get, we would prepare a final concept and then generate some costs based off of that. Uh, construction costs, development costs, and so forth. And then the next paragraph is basically the city's responsibility. We always throw that in because we can't do it without the city. Um, the big one would be getting data basically for us. Do you know if there's any environmental assessments that have been done before? I think we asked that question before. Yeah, probably not. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, for deliverables, we would give you three copies of the, the final report basically in a in a bounded form, opinion of cost, and the three copies of the uh, site assessment if you go that route. And then the next page would be is our fees, and you can see once again very minimal work basically with the preliminary field survey, data collection, and the concept. Uh, the big, the big dollars there are the, the phase one environmental site assessment. And if you read the note down below, it gives you a little bit more information on. I think we talked about that pretty much. It could, it could once again be used as a transfer process in seeking financial financing for that for those uh, lots you might sell. So. It, it's worth uh, looking into, I guess, at this point. Now, like I said, either if I, I guess I would recommend that you may not do it now 
and see if the site will actually work for you first before you. Uh, so do the environmental assessment first. No, I would do that later. If if you like the concept and you think it might fly, you might if you think it'll uh, you get the cost and you you think uh, okay we can handle this we can finance it sell the lots then you, I would definitely do an environmental assessment at that point that would be my recommendation <laughs> okay and if you want to do the whole thing at once that's fine too. <clears throat> And uh, we always stick a timeline in our proposals when you would actually see some results. And the other things are basically additions and assumptions. I'm not going to bore you with all that stuff. But that's, in a nutshell, that's basically what we have. Uh, is there any questions at this point? So we can do the one part without doing the environmental site assessment. We can do all the rest first and then do that last. Yeah. So or we'd only have to pay for it just... Yeah, you could, you could do what you want. The, yeah. the rest of them would go together, pretty much. I yeah. think there's no train depot on that property. No? I don't know. Years ago? I'd have to go back and read the history book. But if you think <laughs> if you think there could be problems with it, you may not even want to, you know, spend the money mm -hmm. to uh, look at the rest. I don't know. I would. Uh, I have to ask Larry where the old train depot was, but it seems to me like it was on this side of the highway. Well, and I really wonder. I mean, because it's been railroad property. At some point, if we're going to do anything with it, we're going to have to do this study. Yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know. So maybe the I best... Could, it best. might be really valuable information to just have, even if we never ever go beyond... You mean, you mean even the, the environmental assessment? Yeah. It might be really good information to have, regardless of whether or not we've moved past this design yeah. time. And if even you, if we sell it to protect ourselves. Yeah, if you sell it the way it is, you may still need that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <clears throat> that, that then uh, I guess that might be another good way to look at it. You spend two thousand dollars or three thousand dollars. You spend two thousand dollars and not know what the site conditions are. Well, now you have to spend five thousand dollars to find out if it's contaminated. If you did, I wish good day. Get you all mixed up there. Yeah, you did because okay. I thought that the environmental assessment was three thousand. That's correct, okay. and the rest of it was two thousand. Right. Okay. So if you spend the two thousand dollars first, mm -hmm. and say, okay, now let's do the environmental. Now you just have to spend another three. You got five in it right away. Mm -hmm. What happens if it comes up? up uh, you got to go into phase two. Well, now you spent five thousand dollars instead of. Just three thousand, or uh, yeah, just three thousand. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple ways to look at it, I guess. <laughs> My ring of council's not quite ready to make a decision tonight. This is still oh, yeah. okay until sure. next meeting. Oh yeah. Okay. We weren't anticipating having such a short group tonight. That's fine. Yeah, well, I think we should all be present yeah. to make before we make anything. Anyone have any more questions for it? I think it's a good idea yeah. to do it. Yeah. yeah, I really do. Thank you think you. there's a possibility of accessing or buying more land to that site? Only if we could get Taylor's property <laughs> in the field. Okay. There's I mentioned that to my okay. sister-in-law. She'll be seeing them in June. <laughs> Put a bug in his ear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, just by looking at it, I gotta ask that question right off the top mm -hmm. of my head. It'd sure be nice if we get them to donate. <laughs> <laughs> no, get the checkbook out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the land prices are what they are. There's yeah. not much yeah. Yeah. I guess which whole thing. That's gold yeah. there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Much.
item on the agenda is uh, energy efficiency rebate program. We have one applicant. And I don't think we can make that decision tonight. We need to table it. Yeah, the application is from Justin's sister, and due to conflict of interest, we probably should have three votes. Okay. Not that it's there's no issue. It's it looks just fine, but. All right, next item on the addition agenda is the radio communication. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh, I want to I want to go back to the energy efficiency event. Okay. Um, we talked about this before, and I'm still shooting to do. I'm assuming that the rec committee is still going to do fall fest in some form. We have to do another community event where we okay. supply something. We got by the last time with the whole town audit doing the little kids thing, and this one has to be bigger and better. And we are going to need to supply, besides information, something that our citizens, residents will take home and use that should eventually or immediately begin saving energy, like CFL light bulbs or some of these energy, I've showed them to you before, these energy kits that will have oh, weather stripping or CFL bulbs or low flow water shower things. Um, we had talked probably a year ago about doing the LED Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. Those are really expensive, a small string. The best price I've been able to find is $5 per string. But if you guys still want me, if you still think that that's the direction you really like, I'll go to the IAMU and see if they can get us some better pricing with, if we would partner with somebody else. <coughs> I don't want you to maybe to approve what we're going to do. I just want you to give me direction as to what you what you really think you want me to research. Since the community action agencies put out those energy kits, it would probably be in our best interest to pursue the LED lights. Okay. Even if but there's some of the new LED light bulbs themselves coming out, maybe we could stretch that. But, you know, we're talking about about 130. 130, 135 households, so we need to order at least that quantity of whatever we do, depending on how many you want to provide for each household, and then, <coughs> I, then I have to have a whole system for how to distribute them, but that's another discussion for another day, but I really wanted to know what direction you guys wanted me to pursue as far as um, our event and what, because we should get them ordered probably so, no later than mm -hmm. July to get them ordered, and so do I have a recommendation from the council? When you say the LED lights, are you talking Christmas lights? Mm -hmm. Because the energy kits are already being provided by the community action agency. So why double up giving mm -hmm. them that part of the program unless there's something else that... Well, and we've done the CFL change of light program mm -hmm. and we, we had like our residents, I think they got like two bulbs this year under the program. So I think the CFL thing is, unless you're handing them to them and going into their house and installing them, you probably, I mean, we'll, we'll probably do the change of light again and make that available in that method, so. But to try something new to see if it's yeah. something of an interest to the community. Well, Not everybody we will use them, but most yeah. everybody will. Yeah. And, and, you know, maybe then we don't have to supply every household. Maybe we yeah, just say those that want to. We uh -huh. can get a quantity and say there's one free and you can purchase however many more sets you want and there do it know. that way. Um, the other thing is the EECBG grant got, the worst part of that got changed. I've been telling you we had to come up with a financing aspect of that where somebody who wanted to do an energy efficiency project could come to the city and get part of their financing. That has gone away. The, the federal government agreed that that was a stupid hurdle for a town of 300 people to try to tackle. So we will not have to come up with a financing program. We still have to do our event and we'll still need to do a project that will save energy but I've been doing a little research on um, solar street lights. 
or solar security lights. We have lots of security lights around town. Mm -hmm. And doing some research on that to see what the cost and the benefit was, and we'll have to have approval before we can go ahead with that from the OEI. But I'm I'm tickled that this financing piece of this has gone by the wayside because I didn't want to be a bank and I couldn't figure out how we were going to. I mean, and our grant is seventy five hundred dollars. We just can't, you know. So it's just the dollars are too small. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you. That's what I needed tonight. Okay. Okay. The next item is from the sheriff <coughs> regarding communication, um, radio communication meeting attendance. We need to appoint a representative to talk about <coughs> our narrow banding compliance, which will be held June 2nd at 2 p.m. in the conference room of the Law Enforcement Center. I think Justin and Randy can probably shed a little light on this, but it's my understanding that there's probably going to be some costs associated with this that are not just pagers, that the city may have to pony up some money at some point for this conversion. Is that... What did they uh, talk on the, on the secondary paper? Uh, I missed that meeting. Because it was my anniversary night. I figured I'd take my life off. Your priorities, Mr. <laughs> <brought off. laughs> um, But the way it sounds, the secondary paging got approved. I'm not sure how they decided to finance it. Um, as far as the narrow banding, I haven't heard of where we're going to have to fork out any money other than the purchase of the new pagers that will be. As far as switching over the radios and things like that, I have not been told of any okay. cost. I haven't get, been Sorry. given any numbers, but I've been told it is a possibility okay. that there could be some expense on our end. Um, we had to go through and get models and all that of all of our radio equipment. We did that at the last fire meeting, so we can bring that up there. So are you in, the, I guess I wanted I was to, planning on attending unless okay. somebody else. And I knew you had to take the day off to do that. Yeah, That's why I was going to take the afternoon off. I just want to make sure that going too, so. somebody from the city perspective was there and if yeah. that's okay with everybody we, else. We should sure learn quite a little more that day, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, well, we're going to go over it the way it sounds with fine tooth comb that day, so. So does that satisfy everybody's need there then? Yes, sir. Um, in oh, regards I'm sorry. It's not up to me to say yes, sir. <laughs> in regards to that, uh, you sent sent the letter out. The sheriff's department, they control the comm center. They are planning after the first of this coming year to uh, go narrow band. <laughs> at that time, which is a year sooner than we were anticipating. So we've ordered 2012, 2000, no, 2011, 2012 pagers already, which might be in, in the next month or two for this coming year's budget. But we're going to order the next years that we were going to push off for a year. We're going to have to order them also. and. Uh, the association said we'd pay for them until you guys, until we get to the following year's budget. Okay. Uh, could we have a, have a motion for that? Motion or? For the, the, they, they jumped us a year on when they said we, we were planning on apply. stretching it out over two years, but now we're only going to have one year to get And you're not meaning that. the year we're in and the next coming year, you're even talking a year beyond that. Yes. Right. I don't think we can stretch it that far. I think it'd be better if you bring the proposal again uh, when it's closer to that year, and then we will approve it at that time. Correct. I guess later you're not. Yeah, but yeah, we'll be, yeah. We'll their expense. That. Yeah, their expense is already going to happen. Correct. Um. I get, here's what I'm thinking. I don't think that's a real problem. I think we can work it out. I don't think it's properly agendized on this for that motion, Randy. So would you 
put together for me what you anticipate to be yet before the 1st of July of this year, what you anticipate for the 12 budget, and what you anticipate you guys will carry on into well, the 13 budget? We're basically, if we don't get billed for them in the next two weeks, we haven't heard, we haven't heard they've come in yet. That right. could already fall it into could already July. Push it. Yeah, it could. So we'd be okay on the ones that we ordered, but it'd be the the next the set. next year's set that we ordered. Yeah, because we only went fifty percent. So we're gonna have to basically when it comes 2012-13, we were ordering another half of the pages that we were need, mm -hmm. and we might and have to because budget. Because of the hard or, time getting them, you just went ahead and ordered them all. Well, Is that what you th That was just for the 2011-2012. We ordered them. For the 2011-2012 budget, yeah, we ordered them two months ahead of time. Yeah, and what we're looking is the 2012-2013. We're going. But I thought council already approved that two-year plan for those. Right, but we're going to need those pages before that two-year plan because we're converting in 2012. Yeah, but I think we can. I think we can manage that within your budget as long as we all are on the same page as so we know what you did, then if it's, if it's really necessary, what I would suggest you do then, if your budget runs out, then your association just buys something else for the department out of your association. Rather than try to do all this bookkeeping to keep track of all that. Then your pagers are paid for. We've already made the commitment. The council will stand by their commitment for the dollars at least, I I'm, hope I'm not speaking out of turn. I don't know why we wouldn't stand or, by that commitment. Or just later on in next year's budget, just re-amend the budget, something like that. Yeah. I mean, I think we can just, but, I think we can administratively work through this. Okay. But, yeah, when you oh, get the association a year sooner year than what we anticipated. You know, I, when so. I read that, I went, no, I think that's, I thought the same thing, so just when you get real figures or real bills, let's, you and I talk about it, we'll just figure that part of it out, and when, when we need to have council do something, then I'll take it to them and say, here's what you got to do. <laughs> How's that? Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Okay. Like, yeah, we'll, we can manage that, Randy. Okay, next item on the agenda is to approve the maintenance agreement with the Iowa DOT. It's the usual agreement that we have had in the past. It's nothing new, but just verifying that we are making the same agreement with them. Do I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the Iowa DOT agreement. I have a second. All Is that Justin? Yeah. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is to prove the mosquito spraying. Now I hate to do this, but the motion needs to state that. <laughs> Here's your motion. If I make a motion, you mean on the maintenance <laughs> agreement? No, on the, the on the mosquito thing. Oh. There's somewhere, I don't know where it is, I don't know what... I got lost, but there's some new law that says in Iowa that people have to have the opportunity to get pre-notification for mosquito spraying. And so the motion needs to be that the city will hire Mosquito Control of Iowa to do the mosquito program for the summer 2011 season, and people wanting to be notified can come to City Hall or sign a pre-notification no spray register prior to, and this says May 15th, but I'm going to have to make it June 1st or something as far as the motion goes. That needs to be the motion, okay? Is this the same company that we've always been using? This is the same company that we've always used. Um, they, we've, we spent $825 doing this last year. I would expect it to be $850 this year. It's an environmental. Is, is there any way we can get them to stop going 40 mile an hour down the streets? <laughs> um, they're supposed to do most I mean, of it aerial. Most of it aerial? And okay. you should never even know they're here. Okay, because I know last year when that little bug was running around, I mean, he barely put any freaking chemical out for what we were paying for. 
Well, yeah. and I know that the I know from visiting with the guy, and Jer I think Jerry was here the morning he was here. The chemicals have changed significantly from what you and I remember when they rent down the fog street. The little kids run down and yeah. run through the fog. You know, remember that? <laughs> We always did that, of course. I made that a long time ago. But the chemicals and the way they disperse them and things have changed and the amount of chemical that they actually use are far different than what you think they are. So, Cause last, I, rem I remember last year, there was a day before I was having a gathering at my house. He sprayed and the mosquitoes were absolutely terrible the next day. I mean, it didn't seem like he... Well, and I don't think them. any of it, it's an immediate kill on them. It was terrible all over. I mean, yeah, it just, yeah. It's hard to get them, but yeah. I mean, it was. We paid and, them, and it's like, yeah, what did it you do? Seem like and just so you're aware, every gone. time they're in town and spray, I get an email that says what time they were here, how much chemical they used, what the weather conditions were, the whole nine yards. So, okay. I mean, and they, so they are doing their job. It's just, yeah. Okay, so I, do I have a motion to approve the way it needs to be written according to <laughs> Yeah, the motion is all right. I'll make the motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Public forum. Anyone would like the floor? Okay, public forum closed. Next item. Jerry, public works. Well, the weather is Winter, if it's summer, or if we're back to winter, or summer, yeah. there are a few things to do, but basically, I just like I said, when the weather gets dry, the only thing it is, uh, I thought it was next month, tomorrow morning, I get to take my wife and have her toe worked over. Now, if you ever seen her toes, you know why, but <laughs> now, I got to be there at 6.30 in the morning, she might say it's one hour, it might be two or three hour or whatever the deal is, but that's basically the only thing it is there. Okay. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Nancy. Um, I am WIND meeting. We had a conference call meeting the last time since we had our last council meeting. Um, the bid proposals to sell the project are coming back and we'll probably have an in-person meeting the last week of May. I'll probably have to go to Ankeny for that one if, if they get everything worked out so that we can improve the final thing. So that's where that's at. Um, the only other really cool thing I have for you, and this is just in your packet tonight, I, I left you some information that kind of looks like this. BigIron.com. This is a website, a web company, a web-based company where lots of public entities go to sell their access equipment. Um, I had a gentleman from Lakeview stop to visit with me about it. Um, the commission rate, if we were to use something like this, is between 7 and 11 percent, depending on the price of the equipment, the higher the price, the lower the percentages of the commission. Um, the way this works is council would decide what they wanted to sell. The company would come and take pictures of it and from all every angle sell it as is. They would, they would do the write-up um, for the equipment, then they'd list it on a particular sale. I think they do sales like every two weeks and it would be on a particular online auction. Um, when the sale is closed, the company collects the money. They would pay the money to the city, and it, when the city was received their money, then the purchaser would receive the paperwork they needed to come and pick it up. We don't have to do anything. We don't even have to drag it out of the shed to get rid of some of our equipment that way. Um, I'm thinking this looks like a great way to get rid of an old green dump truck that we don't use. Looks like a great way when we get to replace our other dump truck, snow plow truck, to get rid of the old one. Um, I think as far as the city requirements, we'd have to put something in the paper that said that you had approved selling this in this method and, and published the fact that it was going to be on this BigIron.com or whatever. Um, I know the firemen had, had mentioned that they couldn't get rid of that fire truck. This company sells fire trucks. 
I mean, I don't know if There's you're interested. Although we want to get rid of it, we need to get the brakes fixed on it. And then we use it for parades again. <laughs> it's a nice truck to use for parades. Yeah, it yeah. is. Well, I, I just said, all I knew was that you want, couldn't trade it, and I didn't know what your status was, mm -hmm. but anyway. Oh, you mean the other? Oh, the whole bumper. Pump. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the one that replaced your, that you replaced with the new one. Um, I did look on the website the day the guy was here, and one that looks like yours. Now, I couldn't compare specs or anything, but one that looks like that one, they had just sold one for $20,000. So... You know, I don't know. That's kind of what we were told, uh, 18 to 20,000. Yeah. Uh, the only drawback is with this is you can't put a minimum on it. You can't reserve. But from some of the, they sell farm equipment, they sell boats, they sell fire trucks, they sell cattle feeders, you name it on this, on this website. And from what I can tell from the things that I looked at that I knew values of, they were getting the value of plus. Um, but we don't have to handle it. We don't have to. You don't have to make it in running order. You just say it doesn't run, or it needs brakes, or whatever. So we don't have to make a decision on it tonight. It was just something I wanted to bring up for you guys to to look at. Go out, get on their website, look at it for yourself. Um, it may be a way to get rid of some excess stuff that we have <clears throat> hanging around that isn't doing anybody any good. Okay. That's it for me. Okay, and Dustin is not here to talk about the solid waste, so... Justin, do you have anything on the EMB? Uh, no, other than they did approve the uh, cell phone paging system. I'm not exactly sure how they decided to finance it, but they were exploring a couple options, and I'll try to figure out which way they went with. Okay. And I'll let you all know. On the 125th, Janelle's not here. Well, we sent out postcards. Yep. So, that's me. Okay. Anything else? No. Hopefully, they'll get some idea what to do with it. They cancel order to go ahead with it. All right. Josh? Oh, nothing really. We did a little bit of refreshing training on the pumper uh, Wednesday. Nance, anything you've heard on the recreation or library or historical? Um, soccer should be about over. Library is humming along just nicely. and I don't know the status on the historical committee's open house that they have scheduled because I don't think they have a museum set up yet. <clears throat> I haven't seen them working on it. So, yeah, that's all I know about it. Okay. And Bob? Seen the Sheriff's Department report here. Does the council have anything else that they would like to bring up tonight? Okay. In your packet, you've received a letter from uh, the Library Board of Trustees thanking us for what we did approve them for and hoping that we didn't shortchange them any because of anything that they have done wrong, which we haven't. It just um, the way things worked out in the budgeting. Um, we had talked about uh, everybody sending me reports on the firemen using the department, and we have had um, I have gone through everything. I have uh, received responses from everyone. And Nancy, did you have any handouts that you wanted to present regarding other agencies? Thank you. Um, most of them, um, as you can see, it's very I have read all of your responses. Um, please read over this. We are not making any decisions tonight. Um, I do know that um, the fire department has not done their 
ninety percent of the fundraising according to what was expected of them. Uh, but uh, there has been discussion regarding the firemen not using it. They did not use more than the building here, but we're still going over the facts. You have the facts here of other communities. Um, we are not trying to slant any public view on any of the city minutes or the newsletter about what is going on. We're trying to state the facts for everybody using and being treated equal. Um, we could put in the city council uh, views in our newsletter, which would cost more, but the city council views are all put in the minutes, so I don't see where we'd have to do any changing as to city council putting anything in the newsletter. And there was no thank you um, addressed for the new equipment, but the city council was not acknowledged for being any part of the new fireman's truck as well. It was just a fireman's um, getting the grant. It was not stating that the city council had any part of it, but the city council is also part of anything that the firemen do. And we are a team. And for the firemen not to think that we're standing by you is not true. Uh, we very much appreciate everything you're doing, and we continue to appreciate everything you do. And we're not trying to give you any special treatment. We're not trying to make it uh, a slanted view where you're not getting your fair share because you are a part of the city as well as every other volunteer in this community. And as to um, the comments made at the last city council meeting where there was no respect to other council members viewing their opinion, according to the Code of Ethics, we are all professional and personal conduct of members must be above reproach and avoid even the appearance of inappropriate. Members shall refrain, refrain from abusive contact, personal charges, or verbal attacks upon the character or motives of the other members of this council, board and commissions, the staff or the public. And if you forget which part of the council you're on and which hat you're wearing, then you're not doing what you were... Um, you had... Uh, sworn in to do your duties here as a city council member. So we have some issues here that we need to address because you need to remember you're on the city council and you do not slash out at anyone else at this table because they have their opinions, you have your opinions, and we're a one team right here. So I want you to consider those factors for the next meeting when we address these issues. And remember why you were um, selected to be on this council. And to remember who you're here to present, represent and not to uh, take your personal conflicts out on anyone here at this table. Difficult questions, diff tough challenges to a particular point of view and criticism of ideas and information are legitimate elements of a free democracy in action. This does not allow, however, for council members to make belligerent, personal, impertinent, slanderous, threatening, abusive, or disparaging comments or faces at any other council member. No shouting or physical actions that could be construed as threatening will be tolerated. You're entitled to your views, but you are also a member of this council and your code of ethics must be taken very seriously. Does the council have any other comments? Okay, our next council meeting will be on June 13th, 6 o'clock. Do I have a motion to adjourn? All in favor?
motion is accepted. Meeting over.